So today we're going to be coding up a training strategy from start to finish, only using resources that are readily available to you. The reason for that is you'll be able to see what my end-to-end -end process is when developing and coding training strategies within TrainingView's script. That way you can replicate this exact same process and have the confidence to be able to code up your very own training strategies, of course, within TrainingView. So you'll be able to see exactly how I break down a training strategy into bite-sized chunks and then converting that across into code, as well as potentially how we might go about problem solving any potential bugs or issues we might have within our code. Now, admittedly, this is going to be a full send because I don't actually know what training strategy we're gonna be coding up in today's video. As I mentioned, this is going to be showing you exactly how to code up a training strategy only using resources that are available to you. So that means I don't have a training strategy that I have the idea in terms of what we're developing today. I don't have a reference code that I'm gonna be referring to in today's tutorial. This is completely going to be off the cuff and we're gonna be coding this training strategy up together. Now, this does come with one caveat and that is the training strategy that we do find and are going to be coding is going to be utilizing indicators as the training strategy's conditions. The reason being is that coding up price action and chart patterns is extremely difficult to do. So that is out of the scope of today's tutorial. So with that being said, we need to find a training strategy. And what better way to do that than going onto YouTube and seeing what we can find. So I'm literally on YouTube. I'm gonna type in training strategies. And we're gonna see what pops up. Of course, the very first thing that pops up is the infamous MACD training strategy, which I did code in a previous video. So we're not gonna be doing that again. We have here a couple of videos from the Day Trading Addict. As mentioned, I'm not too sure what training strategies they're going to be sharing with us. There's no real indication whether they're gonna be using indicators. <laughs> um, so um, probably not the best. Uh, Probably nothing in that one there, but this one, trading strategies that made $1.1 million in 12 months by Trading Lab. And I do know Trading Lab does do a lot of trading strategies uh, and does do some pretty good videos. And what I can see there is that looks like in the thumbnail, they're using the Donchian channel, which is a indicator. Admittedly, this is something that I have used in the past. So I am familiar with the indicator, but I'm not familiar with the particular training strategy and potentially other rules they might have within this particular strategy. So let's just pick that one. This is Larry Williams, a professional trader so who turned this $10, is, $10, into Well, we'll find out the training strategy that we might be coding up today. I'll skip all the intro. Indicator. Donchian channels, so that's good. So we are using the Donchian channels. channels. Click this and we're gonna be adding that in. So we're gonna go into uh, trading view and we're gonna type in Don Chien channels and we have there a Don Chien channel. There we go. So we've got our Don Chien channel on the chart. This one right here. Now the dungeon indicator by itself is pretty nice, but in order for it to work so, just how we want it, we got to change the settings. Go to the settings of the indicator. So any settings and whatnot as well, I should mention, we're going to be changing as well to, well, in this case, 96. I'm not too sure where that number came from, but we're just going to be going with it. So 96, no, 96. And is there anything go else? To the styles tab and change the colors of the... Uh, the styles, red, changing so colors. We don't need to worry also, about that. Something very important. All of these settings I'm about to tell you are for specifically the five minute time frame. Okay. We're getting pretty high frequency. We're going into five minute time frame. Um, I'm sure they'll explain why, but <laughs> why not? So let's and see what we can do. That's the time frame Larry used for this okay. specific strategy. If you want to use a different time frame, please. So apparently, time, a five-minute time frame works well on this. So, so we're going to be using that. This indicator looks like by itself. There are going to be three lines. The middle line, which basically acts as a mean reversion point for the market, which means the price will always be naturally attracted to this line, almost kind of like a mag. You can. So. I guess that is correct. So in this case, they're explaining that the Donchian channel, the middle line, which if you don't know what the Donchian channel is, basically, well, in this example, it plots the, uh, depending on the period that you do, in this case, it's 96. Oh, well, in this case, what we're using here is 96. 
it plots the highest high over the past 96 days and that's the upper band and we have the lower band which is the lowest low of the past well in this case 96 uh candles sorry not days candles because we are using a five minute chart also use it to tell the momentum of the chart so if price is above the line it's bullish if price is below the line it's bear next is sure. the upper and lower band these bands can act as both so this is what i was just mentioning about the bands and oftentimes price will hit these and reject but we can also use them as breakout points as if price breaks this upper band often so well, in this case, we're using the Dungeon Channel, well, by the looks of it, as a breakout type of strategy. So if price goes above the previous high over the past X amount of days or the period, which is, again, in this case is 96, then we're going to be looking for a breakout. In times price will continue so we'll probably upwards, which yep, is exactly go long in that how case. Larry used it that's a little foreshadowing but there is a small problem with the strategy actually it's a pretty big problem let me explain you see so normally how you use this indicator is once price breaks this upper band you enter along say your stop loss right below this middle line and say so stop loss just to note here stop loss we're going to be looking at a Stop loss at the middle band. Two to one risk to reward ratio. And we're just going to be targeting a two to one. But That's completely fine. It's consolidating like this and moving sideways. This is when we start seeing problems with and the that's strategy. A fair point. Because when the market is consolidating, this upper and lower band are going to be very, very close together, like they are here. Which means they are a lot more likely to break, even from a small, tiny, incy move that doesn't have a lot of momentum behind it. Which, in the end, would give you a false signal and you would lose out on the trade so that's a fair point so because we're going to be using this as a type of momentum type of strategy we want to only be taking trades when well there is of course high momentum in the well, stock or whatever we're using it for on whatever asset so we I'm assuming find a way to stop that they're happening. going to be adding so in another condition or indicator or the like. Trades that have a lot of momentum behind them. In order to do that, we need to add two more confirmations. But before that, have you tried? And that's an ad. <laughs> so the first skip confirmation that. indicator we're going to be adding is the LWTI or the lay. Uh, okay. So adding in another indicator, which is good. Again, that's based off the conditions that we, well, specified at the start of the tutorial. Um, LWTI, I'm not familiar with that, but we're gonna add it in anyway. I hope though, that we can actually get the code. Why did I do that again? LWTI, I hope that we can get the code for this. Um, let's see, yes, thank you. Um, it is readily available. So this is the code for the LWTI, which we are gonna be using later on. So that's fine. So we can use that. Larry Williams large trade index. Once you have it added, go to the settings of the indicator and change the period to 25. So they're changing the period the to 25, which is fair enough. It does look a bit whipsawry, so we probably don't want to use that. So 25. Cool. Is the more long-term trends it'll look for. If you're looking for confirmation for shorter-term trends, a smaller number is better. I found 25 works the best at a five-minute time. So apparently 25 then works the best, so we're going to be going with that. Period to and smoothing periods 20. I don't think that did anything. 20. Then for the final... In eh. Now see the, the smoothing period, changing the smoothing period to, well, I think it was five before. Um, to 20 doesn't do anything because we don't have the smoothing activated. But they never really said to activate the smoothing. We can see here what the indicator actually looks like when it is smooth. So I'll just have a look to see what their indicator might be. Indicator that might be a miss a on their end. Volume indicator. Oh, sorry. And a, another indicator. It looks like we... I did that again. Uh, volume. Cool. So we've got the volume indicator. Again, not too sure what settings. I know, I know. Pretty boring. That wasn't me. This will help us a ton <laughs> with avoiding false signals. Go to the settings of the volume indicator and change the MA link to 30. Okay. So we're going... Oops. We're going 
Where are we? Uh, that one, that was 30, I think it was. Pretty. Then go to the styles yep. tab and enable the volume moving average and change the... Of course. And we've got the moving average, cool. The color to white. This volume indicator will help Fair us enough. identify when the market actually has momentum behind all right. it. All right, so I think we've got all the indicators the now. We've got the Dungeon Channel, which will be our, I'm assuming, main confirmation. Then at and then we've got end, several other indicators that we're going to be using as potential filters. Better. So we'll see what those again, conditions sure are. On the five minute time frame, and making sure that we're on the five minute. Fair enough. First, you want price to come up and touch this upper red line. Once that happens, whoa okay up and touch um i'm confused so we have our dungeon channel indicator we have here what they're suggesting is price needs to come up and close above the dungeon channel or well touch the dungeon channel whatever touch means um which look fair enough but it, it touched before. <laughs> They're saying oh, you have to wait for it to touch here, but I mean, it's touched here, <laughs> which is a bit odd, but fair enough. Maybe it's because of some of the other conditions and whatnot, I'm not too sure, but it also has touched previously. Like why wasn't this a entry point or this an entry point? Again, that has touched or closed, whatever the case is, to be honest, how to use the Donchin channel is if price closes above the previous Donchin channel line, then that is when you're going to be entering a long trade. In this instance, it touched, well, three candles prior, so I'm not too sure what the actual condition is, but let's just assume that we are going to be looking at a price close above the previous high of the Donchin channel, and that's what we're going to be doing to go long. So that's our first condition that we're going to be doing. That's our main trigger point. This upper red I'm not too sure what's Once happening there, happens, I'll be completely honest. The next step is you want the LWTI indicator to be green. If it is red... So that definitely looks like the LWTI, which is this indicator, is green. That's fine. And just to note here as well, it looks like they haven't put the smoothing on because you can see here it's a bit more jagged, where with the smoothing on, it's a bit more, well, smooth. So to be honest, I don't think that is relevant if I turn that off. I mean, we can test it out either way. We can see if it does any difference. And that's the beauty of, of course, coding this up. So it might be good to add something in later on. You would not enter into the trade. Then finally, you want the volume bars to be above the white line. And you also so want volume to above the white green. line. They aren't above the and white line the... or not green. Sorry, what was that? Green. If they aren't... Okay. So volume has to be above... The white line, of course, the moving average, and it has to be green, indicating that it is a long trend. Above the white line or not green, you would not enter into the trade. This is going to be showing the market. Okay, so I think that is our conditions. It's Hope. not consolidating, and there's enough volume to enter the trade. All three of these criteria need to be met at the exact. Okay, so all three criteria have to be met. I'm assuming it's going to be the opposite of shorts. Uh, we can double check that at the end, but I think that is enough to crack on with the actual coding itself. So the very first thing that we need to do, and we mentioned this, is get the Donchin channel coded up within our training strategy and get the well strategy conditions in the strategy. So what we can do is open up our Pine script, and that is the code from that LWTI, which we don't need for now. What we can do is open new strategy, and this is our new strategy, and I can save this as... Uh, Dunchian channel. Uh, what's the YouTuber's name? Training Lab? Training Lab. Cool. Um, that's saved. And now we can crack on with the code. So the very first thing we're going to be doing is naming the actual strategy itself. So same thing. The Dungeon Channel Trading Lab. All of these conditions we can keep in there for now. That's fine. If I remove it, will I get an error? Compiling. I've got an error 
blah, 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 blah. Strategy must contain so the strategy function. That's just, oh, wrong one. <laughs> Embarrassing. Let's remove that. Let's just save that. And we can fix all that up later. Okay, so we've got our strategy saved. The very first thing we need to do is get the Donchin channel across, get the code across into this particular training strategy. So the way we do that is we simply go to the code itself and then, sorry, we go to the indicator itself and then go to the source code for that particular indicator. So under DC, which is the Donchin channel, I'm going to click on get the source code and I am going to copy literally everything that's within here. Copy that, open up our Donchin channel trading lab. So go back to here and I'm literally going to paste this within here. So the way we take out all of the stuff that isn't needed is of course by removing it. <laughs> and the very first thing that we need to remove is the indicator line, the version five, we don't need all that. Now we do have here length for the Donchin channel. And I think by default, Training Lab said 96. There's an offset, there's a lower, an upper, and a bias. All of that we probably don't need to touch, except we probably don't need the offset to be honest. So we can get rid of offsets. And if we're getting rid of offset, we need to also get rid of all the other references to offset, which I if I double click on that, that highlights offset and that will show me where offset is. So I can remove that and I can remove these offsets here. I need them. Um, so that's the length. The lower upper is the lower and upper bands and the bias, which is the math average. This is the center line of the bias. Um, I don't know why it's called bias, but our oh, basis, <laughs> basis, oh gosh, uh, but that's completely fine. Um, so we can keep all of that there like so, and then there's just plotting the upper and lower. So pretty easy. And then the fill, uh, we can get rid of, uh, we can keep the fill in whatever. So uh, the very first thing I want to do now that we've got the code within this training strategy is just make some unique variables for this uh, because we're going to be adding in some other indicators. So. Uh, a unique variable would not look like length because if we add in another indicator, then that uh, might conflict or the variable might conflict with, well, this variable. So basically all we're going to be doing is putting uh, Don underscore, not me, uh, Don underscore length. Um, and that's going to be our length. And then we need to change everywhere else that length was referred to. So Don length, Don length, that looks fine. Um, I'm going to also do the same thing for lower, upper, and the bias, just to be safe. So that is that, that is that, basis, I said that again, upper, lower, and that looks good. And I'm just going to change the titles here to Don Basis. Don upper, Don lower. Cool. Now, if I test this to see if it works, I'm going to hide the previous Donchin channel. I just want to see whether the Donchin channel actually adds to the chart. So if I go to add to chart and it does add to chart, I'm actually going to get rid of this uh, long condition equals I'm going to get rid of all this for now. I don't need that. I'm going to get an error, but it's confusing me. <laughs> so let's get rid of that. Let's add it again. There we go. Oh, I'm not getting an error now. That's good. Probably because I had literally no code in there. So that's completely fine. And I'm going to call this on GN channel. Cool. So one last time. Awesome. So that looks to be working. Now I've added the code in. We need to get the conditions now for the Donchin channel. Uh, what I want to do is add in a couple lines of code down here and we can call this um, 
Indy underscore one underscore long and Indy underscore one underscore short. So we've got a variable called indicator one long and indicator one short, and that is going to be equal to some condition. And our condition was, um, which was similar to previous, is that when there is a crossover or when price crosses above the Donchin channel, then we're going to be going long. If the price crosses below the Donchin channel, then we're going to be going short. So what we can do is use uh, ta.crossover. And the crossover, I believe, is going to be the crossover of price, so close with the don underscore upper let's try that out and then the ta cross under however in this example is going to be the close with the don lower cool so that looks to be completely fine there what i want to do is now use some reference code which is available on my github and that will actually help us to get the trading conditions within a particular format so that we can actually take trades so if i go into my github and if i go to training view strategies and the beauty about coding is that well i'm not very proficient when it comes to coding so i can't just code most of this straight off the dome um, i do use a lot of reference code and that might be my own material but again because we're going to be coding this based off resources that are available to you. Well, this GitHub is available to you, so we might as well use it. Um, what we can do is go to uh, indicators and NFX strategies, and we can go to the full strategy template here. Um, one of the problems is that the, uh, this is, well, GitHub thinks that it's in PostScript, <laughs> but it's actually in PineScript. Um, so it's a bit of a annoyance because it's not actually in the right uh, coloring format and whatnot, but nonetheless, that's completely fine. What I want to do is find our strategy conditions within the code itself, just to use as a reference. Actually, you know what? Maybe I won't use that. <laughs> let's go out of that, go out of that. Uh, let's go into basic strategies and let's go into uh, this one here, which I did not that long ago, a Bollinger Band code. And this is fairly simple um, code here. It's probably better than the NNFX, particularly for this case, because these basic strategy codes, what they do is, um, well, essentially do what we're doing today is utilize indicators to put in particular conditions so that that way we can take training strategies. Um, and we are, uh, doing almost a similar format here where we've got an indicator one, indicator two, and then we've got some entry conditions and we've got some exit conditions. So I'm gonna cheat actually. And I'm going to, I won't do the exit conditions just, oh actually no, I might as well. I'm gonna do the exit conditions. I'm gonna copy this code across and go into here and paste that in just so I've got a template to start with. So all this does is it gets the entry long conditions. And in this particular case, we've got our entry long conditions to be equal to uh, our strategy position size is less than or equal to zero. So we're only entering a trade if we're not in a long trade or we're in a short trade. So that's completely fine. And our indicator one long uh, is equal to true. So what I can do is remove that because we don't have an indicator two. And I just want to check. So indicator one long, which is the variable that we declared previously, which just so happens to be the exact same variable that I've used in the past. So that's completely fine. Um, what I will do is change that. That's cool. So basically all we're doing is we're adding in our entry conditions for our entry long and entry short being equal to whatever these conditions are. And well, in this case, we're only going to be entering again if we're not in a trade or if we're in a short trade and our long conditions from our indicator one, which is our Donchin channel is true. So that's completely fine. And then the opposites for shorts, completely fine. 
And then we've got here a plot shape function, um, which is a good little cheat, which is why I kind of uh, uh, cheated and went onto my GitHub. Again, this is available to you, so you can do the same thing. And it just plots the shape when these entry long conditions are well equal to true. Um, so it just plots a shape for longs and shorts. And then it also will enter the trade. So strategy, using the strategy entry function, it will enter the trade based on the conditions being true above. So it's all nicely done for us, which is good. Uh, I won't do the strategy exits just yet. I'll remove that, I'll add it in later. So we're just focusing on entries only. And well, this looks good. So I'm going to update chart. And this now should have our strategy conditions in. We'll see. Nothing happens. Fair enough. TA crossover of close and price. Now, I think what's happening is we need to actually enter a trade. Let's find an example, particularly along. Okay, uh, this example. We need to enter a trade when the Donchin channel, sorry, when the price crosses above the previous Donchin channel value. Because what's happening is, I think what the trading strategy is doing for this particular example uh, indicator is that it's looking for a crossover of the price and the current Donchin channel value, but the current Donchin channel value is always going to be the high of, well, the the current candle, which is uh, in, in that context, in that context, it will never actually equal to true, um, that trading condition. So if I go to here, uh, Donchin channel upper, and as mentioned, we want to look for a crossover of the price, so the close of the previous Donchin channel upper. So what I can do is add in, in square brackets uh, one, and that will basically look back one candle to the previous value. If I update that, there we go, like magic. <laughs> uh, and that does come with a little bit of knowledge uh, of, well, the indicator that you're using and the strategy conditions that you need to use. And again, I have used the Dungeon Channel in the past in trading view, so I'm familiar with that particular issue. Um, and look, these issues are going to come no matter what indicator that you're going to use. Most of the time, um, you don't really have to do this for some of your indicators, but saying that depending on your conditions, logically thinking about it will help you get to, well, uh, solving the problem that you need to be solved, that needs to be solved. In this case, as mentioned, we want to look for a crossover of price compared to the previous close of the uh, Donchin channel. Sorry, the, we want to look for price closing compared to the previous value of the dungeon channel, which is why we have to use the um, in square brackets one. So we need to look back one candle for the dungeon channel. Saying that, I think we've got our first uh, condition coded up. So our long condition is there, that's fine. And then we're shorting here, which if we look at it, so we can see here that although the Donchin channel does get lower, price never closed until this point here. And when it when price confirms a close below the previous Donchin channel, then it's going to enter on this candle here. So that looks like it's all working fine. Another example. And again, we're not entering another trade until we have closed out the previous one, so that's fine. And then we're entering long again over here. So it looks like that our entry condition for the Dungeon Channel works. Now I want to add in our exit condition, which is going to be, of course, exiting when the price closes above or below the center line. So I'm going to go back onto my GitHub. I'm going to steal some code that I've done previously, um, the exit conditions. Um, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to save this as a new version. So that's fine. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the code. I'm going to paste in exit conditions. And 
what we're going to be doing is exiting. This is from the previous code, so I don't need to do all of that. But it's going to be a similar conditions, fortunately enough. So just to explain this, exit condition, so exit long is equal to the crossover of price or the close and some value. And in this case, we're going to be using the the Donchin channel basis. And for short exits, we're going to be using, again, the same thing, but across under of the close and the basis. And that is going to be long. Oh no, that's fine. Um, what this is saying is that we're going to be closing strategy close. We're going to be closing the long entry strategy, uh, the long entry trade. Uh, which is the same reference as this. So it's just a reference to the um, entry or the open position, which is long entry here. So we're going to be closing long entry for a total of 100% quantity. Um, and we're going to be closing short entry at a total of 100% quantity. Uh, what I'm going to do is clean that up a bit. And we can see if this works. Cool. So that's added to chart. Let's see if we've got any changes. Oh no, it didn't seem to work. <laughs> I bet you any money. It's because we need to do the same thing. We need to go back in here and we need to look again at the previous close, very likely. So if we look at the previous close, then I can update. No, maybe I've got these around the wrong way. So let's look at this. So we've got a long entry here and we want to exit when there is a cross over, sorry, a cross under of price close. Maybe I won't do cross under actually. Maybe I'll just do when the close Uh, when close is less than and close is greater than. So we're going to be looking to exit our longs when the close is less than the John, the Donchin middle line, or the basis line. And we're going to be exiting our shorts when the close is greater than the Donchin middle line. The reason why uh, the crossover might not work, which is probably why that one might not be working, is that the... There might be a gap and if there is a gap then a crossover won't actually be triggered so this is probably a much more safer option in this instance there we go so now we can see here that we are actually triggering a exit let's see if the condition is correct um in that instance we might not want to look back one candle because it looks like here that we should have actually exited on this confirmation here. So we actually should have exited on this trade. I'm um, saying that in this instance, we might not want to include that look back of one. We should actually be exiting here. There we go. So this is, so the exits are slightly different in the fact that we don't want to look back of one. We just want to look at whether the, on the current candle, uh, the current candle close is less than the Donchin middle line, which in this case it is. So then if that is the case, then we confirm that we want to exit the trade. So we exit the trade here. So that looks like that actually worked. Uh, no problems. And then for a short trade example, uh, we've entered here, which we've confirmed. We have exited when, and this is a good example, when the close is above the Dungeon channel. That works quite fine. Cool. So I think we've got our Donchin channel set up quite fine here. What I'm going to do is just clean up the code. So we've got our Donchin channel and we've got our code for the Donchin channel here. And then we've got our conditions for the Donchin channel entry conditions. 
then we map those entry conditions to our uh, conditions for us actually entering the trade, which again, we've copied across from the GitHub. And then we've just got some plot functions and then we're going to be entering long and short based on these conditions above. So you don't actually need to change anything here. You can keep that as is. Again, you can get that off my GitHub. So it's all available there. And we've got our exit conditions, which is based on the dungeon channel. So that's our first exit. We're going to be exiting. Are we exiting when the dungeon channel? Yeah, it acts as a stop loss. So we're going to be exiting the uh, dungeon channel when... Hmm. Actually, no, we're not going to be... <laughs> I don't think we're going to be exiting it. We're just using take profits and stop losses, aren't we? So... <laughs> Oh, I've wasted your time. Uh, we're not actually using this. Um, we're going to be using it as a stop loss take profit. I'm going to still keep the code here. My apologies. Um, we're actually going to be using this as stop loss take profits, not necessarily a exit indicator. So <laughs> what does that mean? Um, that means that let's go back into this long example. In this long example, we are going to be looking for a long trade here. And move this. And we are going to be setting our stop loss at this value. And we're going to be targeting an arbitrary value of two to one, which is going to be this. I mean, we can, <laughs> we can leave the stop loss in there just to act as a trailing stop loss because why not? I've coded it in there. Let's just keep it in there. So in this example, we've got a uh, a, a losing trade um, where the price did not go to, um, I guess, a risk to reward ratio of two. So it didn't go up here. Um, it did go backwards and it did actually exit. But instead of exiting at a stop, uh, we've exited at the exit of the middle band. If you want to keep that, you can keep that. I mean, I can take it out to be true to the actual train strategy. Maybe I'll do that, but I mean, the option's there. So <laughs> what we can do is code up this and I am now going to steal some code off my GitHub um, to get a take profit stop loss. And that is from my NNFX trading strategies. I'm going to go to the full template. And somewhere in here, I will have uh, continuation trades, one can rule, bridge too far, baseline ATR, entry conditions, entry orders, blah, 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 take profit and stop loss conditions. Now there is trailing, trailing stop losses and the like, but I'm not going to be using that. I just want to get the code. <laughs> so I'm going to copy my code and uh, let's just keep that in there for now. Paste that in. So I've copied over the code from my NNFX uh, full template and within that template I have take profit and stop loss conditions now admittedly or granted that there is a trailing stop loss function within here based off the ATR which we're not going to be using um, so I'm just going to remove all of that um, risk profit risk loss I can remove that for now and we've got our take profit value, which we want to keep here. Our take, our stop loss, which we want to keep there. Our profit shorts, which we want to keep there. And our stop loss for shorts, which we want to keep. So we've got the variables there and then we're just plotting the variables here. So that's no issue at all. So the very first thing we want to do is plot where our, uh, our profit longs are going to be. So, um, what I might do is actually change the order of this. We actually need to probably have the... <laughs> yeah, that will work. All right, so we've got here a variable for stop longs, profit longs, stop shorts, and profit shorts. That's fine. I didn't really need to juggle that around, but whatever. Um, we've got here a value called entry price, and that is going to be the price when we enter the trade. So that's fine. Strategy open trades dot entry price for the strategy open trades minus one. I think that should work fine. 
we'll see. And then what we want to do is, firstly, we need to get the distance of the entry price, which we've got in our code, and the Donchin center line. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the Donchin, uh, we need to get the, let's call it distance. is equal to the entry price minus the Donchin center, which is this Don bias. Now, one thing I want to do is take the math.abs. So I want to take the absolute value of this. The reason being is if we have an example of a short, we're going to be taking our price minus the value of our center line, which is actually going to be a negative value for shorts, and we don't want that. So we're just going to take the absolute value of uh, the two, which basically absolute value just gets rid of the, the, the negative sign, and we're going to be taking that value. So it's just a good practice to do. We'll take the ABS of that. So we've got here our stop distance being the entry price minus the Don Chin channel. Uh, middle line so we can use that now to set our stop loss for our longs which is simply going to be our price minus this stop distance now i know i could have just added in the donchin channel bias but maybe uh through the um through what the uh, strategy has recommended to go just below the donchin channel line so we can actually multiply this by um Let's go 1.05. So that will just add 5% uh, to the actual distance itself. So that will be, let's say just below. And I mean, we can adjust that. Um, so that's what I've done there. So, I mean, here I could have just put in the, the Donchin channel basis and that would have been completely fine. But what I've done here is that um, I've just times to by 1.05 and we'll see if that's an appropriate number. We'll see if that works, to be honest. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, now, our long entry price is going to be our entry price plus the stop distance, but we're going to target a two to one risk to reward. So we're going to times this by two. Our stops for our shorts is going to be the same thing, but only because it's a short, we need to do entry price plus the short dis uh, the stop loss distance. So that's fine there. And for our entry longs, we're going to be doing, oh, sorry, profit shorts. We're going to be doing entry price minus the stop loss distance. And here, just within my code, I've got here some plot functions for uh, each of those. So we'll see what this actually does. Um, oh, I keep doing that. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, it looks like, okay. So what's happening here is we are, by the looks of it, repainting. Well, it looks like that this is working out quite fine, but we are repainting or changing the Donchin channel value every time. Um, so we're recalculating the plot functions. So it doesn't help because, well, ideally we, we want to have the plot functions plotted up um, fine, just visually it helps. So, um, sorry, I didn't really explain that too well. <laughs> What's happening here is that we've got the Donchin channel center line, uh, which originally, and maybe I'll do, I'll get rid of the 0.05, just so it's a bit easier to visualize. So it looks like we're getting the value of the Donchin channel uh, center line completely fine because our stop loss is on the Donchin channel center line. So that's no issues at all. Um, because we can see here that this is the Donchin channel center line and then uh, that goes into the um, training conditions. So no issues there. And we can see that that should be there. So it looks like on our first candle, this is working quite well. 
and I'm assuming that that's a two to one there. Yeah, it's more or less. It's more or less two to one. So that is what our training condition or our setup should look like. Uh, there we go. So it is two to one. So our very first candle, it looks like it's working quite well. However, because the calculation reoccurs on every single candle, our take profit target and our stop loss, which is these are in uh, this green and red line in this example, is not working correctly. So basically what we need to do is store the information when we take the trade of the Donchin channel. And I have done this in my NNFX code. However, uh, we can do that on the fly here. So what we can do is when we are entering a trade here, we can add in another set of conditions where we also want to store the Donchin channel and store it in a variable here. So what we can do is add in a couple lines of code here where we can add, uh, we can call uh, entry underscore price, oh sorry, entry underscore Don, what are we calling it? Base, basis um, is equal to a float uh, zero to zero. So basically what we're doing here is declaring the variable. And then what we want to do is when we enter a trade, whether it's an entry long or an entry short, within this if statement, we also want to... So when we are entering long, we are entering a trade, but we also want to store the Donchin channel basis, uh, which is this value here, into there, and do the same thing for this. And I'm getting an error. I need to use this operator. And now that error has gone. And then now this should hopefully fix the problem where our stop distance is now at the entry price, but also at the entry Donchin channel basis. I really hope this works. It's been a while since I've done this. Uh, let's go add the chart. No, I'm getting an error. That didn't work. Uh, I'm going to cheat and go back to my code. I know I've done it here. Entry orders. Submit if entry orders. That should be fine. Okay. So what I've done here is if there was entry orders, then I've done it. Okay. Well, maybe we'll do that instead. Okay, we'll do that instead. I should have just gone into the code. I really would have thought that that would have worked. Odd. Hmm. Anyway. Oops. So entry ATR. So I'm using the ATR, but here I'm not doing the ATR. Okay. Let's just do that. Forget all of that. I'm going to remove that. Remove that. I'm going to keep this. Thing. That I'm going to keep. So, <laughs> what I've done in my previous code is I have utilized this type of statement where the entry ATR, and we're not using the ATR, but the entry indicator, whatever indicator that we're using, in this case it's the ATR, is being declared as float zero. So that is what we've done. So I'm actually going to cut that and replace that. And when we have a, uh, if the training strategy is equal to zero, or we have our entry longs and entry short conditions equal to true, which I'm getting an error here because that's not declared. We need to change that there. 
entry long and entry short. Then our, so basically what this is saying is that if our, uh, if we're not in a trade or we've just opened up a trade, then our entry long, sorry, our entry Donchin channel basis is going to be equal to, well, what we had there previous, oh, sorry, um, what the, the Don basis is here. So basically, if we're not in a trade or we've just opened a trade, then our entry DOM basis is going to be equal to uh, what the indicator is suggesting. However, if we're if this condition is not true, so basically if we are already in a trade, then we want our entry DOM basis to be equal to the entry DOM basis of the previous candle. So and that will store the Dungeon Channel basis on the entry of a new trade. So let's see if this works. Uh, update chart. Ah, there we go. It's worked. Uh, somewhat. Now it's looking like it wants to get the this time the previous candle, which is, which would actually make more sense, which is how I had it previously. Um, your entry, so we're gonna be buying on the confirmation of the previous Donchin channel, which means that we're gonna be taking the stop loss and take order prices on the previous candle, so that makes sense. And that should be a two to one, oops. Uh, roughly two to one. Yeah, it's pretty close. What I want to do is finally um, add back in the here yeah. 0 0.05. Uh, it's probably a bit too wide to be honest. Yeah, I can do whatever. So I'm adding in 5% and that, oh, no, that's not adding 5%. Let's add in 2%. So I'm adding in 2% to the distance. And that's going to be just below the previous Dungeon channel line. So that gives us a little bit of room. And we're gonna be targeting this, which is roughly a two to one risk to reward. So, We've got here our stop loss and take order conditions for our longs, and we've got lines there to visualize. We've also got here for our shorts, so we can test this example. So if we've got here a short trade, and we enter here, we're gonna be targeting for shorts the green line that's below, and our stop loss is gonna be the red line, which is here. And we can see here that that's again, a two to one risk to reward. So it looks like visually our indicator's working. Um, and this would have been, <laughs> in this case, a massive gap. So we actually would have exited down here. So that doesn't happen often, but oh well, can't complain with that. And that seems to be working. So what we can do now is add in the conditions to our um, exit strategy to actually exit the trades. So. I'm gonna go back into my NNFX code. Uh, exit orders. I'm gonna copy exit orders because that is more or less the same. I'm gonna paste this here. And there we go. So basically this exit orders code over here is saying that we're going to be exiting and with the no nonsense forex trading strategy, there was two trades opening up at the same time, which is why there's two exit orders. We don't need that. So we're gonna be ex, uh, removing that and we're gonna be removing that. And what we're gonna be doing is exiting and we're gonna call it um, exit long one. From entry long one, are we calling it entry long one? No, we're gonna be calling it long entry. And 
from short entry. Um, and I'll just change that uh, exit long. Makes it short. And comment, that's fine. Cool. So I've just changed the code a little bit there because the um, references weren't matching up, which is completely fine. You'll be able to pick that up, no doubt. Uh, what uh, we've got here is we've got a strategy exit when um, or with the ID of exit long and it's going to exit the long entry. So from entry means, well, what uh, trade do you want to exit? So we've got a exit on the long entry um, and it's based off the, and we just got a comment here, based off the stop level of the stop loss, which is um, our stop loss for longs and also a limit of our profit longs, um, which is our take profit limit. And that is for our profit longs. We've got the same thing for shorts. We're gonna be exiting um, a short trade. And the trade that we're gonna be exiting is the short entry trade. And we're going to have the comment while well, short exit. And we're gonna be exiting on our stop loss or our stop is gonna be exited on our um, stop loss level for our shorts. And also we're going to be uh, exiting on our take profit limit, which is our uh, profit shorts, um, which is uh, identified here. And that is a error. Oh no, that's, is that a big S or a small S? Oh no, that's a big S. It's funny. Um, so that looks like that's going to work. Let's update the code. Looks like we got something happening. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out our exits section because I don't want that to confuse us. So I'm going to keep that there if anyone wants to use it, but uh, to be purist to the actual trading strategy from uh, trading labs, um, we'll stick to what we had. Cool. So what we've got here is our um, an interesting example. So our long entry, we've got here our take profit and stop loss levels, which is um, plotted here. Uh, for now, both of the take profit and stop loss levels are um, for both longs and shorts are both in there. So it's a little bit confusing, but you'll be able to, I mean, you, you can see what's happening. So we've got a long entry, which is fine, but we don't hit either our take profit or stop loss at all. And we actually have a alternative signal to go short. So the trading strategy actually exits the trade because we have a conflicting signal and a opposite signal. So we have actually exited at whatever value it is. It looks like it's well, just break even almost. And now we're going short, which is completely fine. Um, well, it is what it is. So in this instance, we now have gone short based off the dungeon channel conditions and we have a long and short entry. And what's happened here is we've actually exited the trade at a profit, uh, which we can see here. We've exited the trade at a profit and we have well closed out the trade. <laughs> the problem is, is that we've just entered a new trade now, which is not ideal because we just exited it, exited the trade. So not really sure what we can do there in terms of exiting the trade and then, well, not having the trading strategy to enter in another trade. So I think what we can do, well, potentially is what I've done in the past with a, well, no-nonsense Forex uh, strategy is um, in the no-nonsense Forex strategy, there's a bridge too far rule where basically we can add in a counter and that counter will be able to track whether we've entered in a long trade or a short trade previously and it won't enter into another trade until a certain condition is met. So what I'm thinking here to fix this problem is we've entered in, uh, let me move this. Uh, remove these lines. We've entered in short over here and price has gone down and we've exited short. And in this example, we don't want to enter another short trade until, uh, well, let's say until we have a crossover of price back above the center line 
and then it resets our counter and then we can enter into another trade. So I think having a counter that tracks whether um, a trade has been taken and if a trade is taken, then we're going to be, um, I guess, counting that. And until the price crosses back above the center line, then our counter will reset. And basically we only wanna be taking trades when our counter has reset back to, well, let's say zero. So this is a rather unique situation to be in. Um, I guess coding trading strategies is never easy and you have to think well, somewhat outside of the box, but we can do something there nonetheless. So uh, let's do that. And uh, what I wanna do here first is get our Donchin channel spot on before we add in more indicators. So we'll start off with the Donchin channel entry conditions, which we've done. We've then got the Donchin channel exit conditions, uh, which is based off the take profit and stop loss levels, which we've done. Now we just wanna make sure that our, um, we're not re-entering trades unnecessarily. So uh, let's see what we can do here. So similar to this, I'm going to add in a counter, but I'm gonna add in a counter um, in the entry conditions section here. So let's put in um, trade underscore counter is equal to floats um, zero zero. And oh, it doesn't have to be a decimal, it can just be float. And then What we want to do is, where are we going to do it? So we've declared our counter variable here. We then have our entry conditions and whatnot here. We're going to plot the shape, that's fine. And then we have our entry long over here. So what we want to do is, uh, Oh no, we can do this after that, so sorry. Let's do that here. So we've got all of our entry conditions are above. We're declaring our counter, and then we wanna copy very similar code to what is over here within our counter section uh, for our uh, Donchin center, center line. So I'm gonna copy that code across. I'm gonna put in a comment, uh, uh, stores, whether a trade has been taken and resets when there is a cross of price and Don Chin basis. Cool. So I've got a counter. If the trading strategy position size is equal to zero, so we're not in a trade, Let's do We probably don't need that. We don't need the stop loss distance, sorry. So if the Donchin channel position sorry, if the strategy position size is equal to zero, so we're not in the trade, then the counter can be equal to zero. Uh if the oops equal to zero, else if the, else if, let's say the, um, else if we have entered a trade, so entry long or entry short, then we can do uh, this. So the counter is equal to uh, the trade counter plus one. So here, what we're doing is the counter starts off as zero. If the position size is equal to zero. Mm, no, actually we don't want that. Just thinking, okay. So the counter starts off as zero as declared by this float variable. Oh, 
Maybe I'll keep that in there. So the counter starts off as zero, but we don't want this because that's going to reset every time we're not in a trade, so that's fine. But what we want to do is reset the counter to zero when there is a cross of the price and the buy, the, the dungeon basis. So we can do cross RTA dot cross of the Donchian basis and close. So it doesn't matter whether it's a cross above or cross under, as long as there's a cross, then the basis will uh, reset to zero. And then if there is a long entry or a short entry, then we want the trade counter to be equal to one. Or well, sorry, then we want the trade counter to be, uh, yeah, be equal to one. So I don't need this trade counter. Let's just do that. And that should work. The problem is I have put this in the wrong spot, which is why I wanted to put it above. Um, we need to use this as a trade filter. So I'm going to cut this. Um, hmm. I think we will because that's going to be entry long, but we're using this for the... So this in theory, I'm sorry, the reason why I'm thinking, this in theory should be entry long is equal to uh, our conditions that we're going to put in here. And then we are going to store the counter values for our entry longs and entry shorts. But then the problem here is that we have a plot shape for our entry long um, then we have a plot shape here for our entry longs, but it's not taking into consideration the counter, which is a bit annoying. I might need to change that up. Anyway, uh, what I want to show you though is this counter and see if it actually works. So we can plot a... Um, I'm trying to think which plot it is. Plot bar, plot candle, plot character, I think it is. Uh, series of plot the shape. Oh, I think I've got something similar. <laughs> I keep referring back to my old code. Uh, we'll find something. It is... Baseline, ATR rule, bridge too far. Condition transition and single spot shape. Bridge too far, one candle rule. Continuation trades, this one. Yeah, it is plot character. Uh, what was it? The continuation trade rule. So this is what I coded up in the continuation trade rule. So <laughs> I could have copied that. No, oh. we'll see how we go. Um, so what we've got here is plot character um, input and uh, we'll just do this. Just one. Well, I don't have any of these, so it's just zero or one. So plot character is equal to zero true false cool so this is going to what this is going to do is basically plot a one or a zero or a one above the um above the bars just to see if this is actually working correctly or not that's all it does what well what i know is that it's not working is no i do need trade counter is equal to that's Uh, plus one. And then at the end, else the trade counter is equal to the trade counter of the previous bar. So what this is going to do is cycle through our code 
So if there is a crossover of the center line and sorry, the dungeon channel center line and the close, then it's going to have a value of zero or trade counter is going to have a value of zero. Else, if there is a long position or a short position, then the trade counter is going to equal to, um, no, that can be one. I'll take that back. That can be one. Else, if we've entered a trade, then it's going to equal to one, whether it's long or short, it doesn't matter. And then if this condition isn't true, then the trade counter is simply going to be equal to the trade counter of the previous candle. So basically what this is going to, to do is track whether we have entered into a trade uh, previously, and it's going to reset when the trade counter, sorry, when price closes uh, or crosses with the Dungeon Channel center line. So we'll see what this does. So we've got here a bunch of ones, um, which is fine. Um, what we can see here, which is perfect, is we have a cross of the Donchin channel, uh, sorry, a cross of price and the Donchin uh, line. So we can see here that price is crossed and now we're looking for a trade, which in this case we have entered a trade. So this is a short trade. And once we've entered a trade, then the counter then flicks, flips to one. So that's fine. And so we're one, 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 one. And now we've exited the trade, but we have uh, the counter is still the value of one. And all we need to do here is put a condition where if the value is, well, not equal to zero, so there hasn't been a cross, then we don't want to be entering trades. So we don't want to be entering trades until we have reset the counter. So it's back to zero. And then we can start well, commencing trades, uh, which is over here. Uh, I don't know why that's exited. Problem for another time. <laughs> so uh, what we want to do here, our counter's working. So all we want to be doing is um, plotting shapes when we have an entry long and our counter is equal to zero. Are plotting short sh shorts as well on the same conditions and we want to be entering long uh, when our trade counter is uh, equal to zero plus our long conditions are equal to true. Now that should get rid of that trade. Uh, the trade that we had here, which it does, but hopefully, oh gosh, it's gotten rid of everything. What have I done? Uh, do I need to do the previous candle? Hmm. Let's see what's going on. Now, this is definitely the real experience. Okay. Okay, it is the previous candle. So we've entered long. So on the candle, the candle then changes on the candle close, then we've, okay, so I'm one candle out. Uh, so this also, all of this has to be this one. So on our conditions, we're looking for the trade counter from the previous candle. Otherwise, it's not going to enter trades. Similar to what we were talking about before with the Donchian close. There we go. So now we've got the trades entered. So here we can see we've got our short trades where the Donchian channel, sorry, when price closed below the previous Donchian channel. So that's worked. So once that close is confirmed, then we've entered the trade here. We haven't entered a trade previously because our counter was previously zero, so that's fine. And now we have, uh, well, I'm assuming the, the stop conditions, there we go. So our stop conditions are working, that's good. And we have not entered in a trade. Uh, we're not entering in another trade because our counter is still one. And our counter remains one until 
it's reset, which is good. It's reset here. And we've entered in a long trade, which well, by the looks of it, that issue isn't there anymore. I don't know what was happening there. Uh, but we've entered in a long trade on uh, the close of that candle. We're now targeting this value and we have a stop loss of just below. Yep, that's two to one, roughly more or less good. And we have exited this trade at a loss, yeah, which is fair enough. We don't enter in another trade. There's no short conditions here. Our counter resets back to zero and we've entered in another long trade. So that's fine. That meets our conditions. That is not the right one. Um, this one. So we've entered in here. Targeting two. I'm just doing some testing. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Two to one. Uh, that didn't work. That exited at a loss to give us a profit. I need a. I need a. I need a, I need a winning example. Exit. Okay, this looks like it could be a profit, maybe. Okay, this is a profit. Okay, let's see if this works. There's a lot of losing trades. <laughs> I just want to see if a profit works. Uh, our stop loss is going to be here. And our take profit is there. That should be two to one. That's good. And we... Exit here and a profit. That's no issues at all. Interesting though, because our counter did actually reset. Um, and that's what we don't want to happen. So yes, we were entered into a trade and we were already in a trade. And then our counter, our, sorry, price closed while we're in a trade below the zero line and then went back up. And then that reset our counter, even though we we're already in a trade. And then we entered in another trade. So we do need to adjust our counter again. Uh, we need to adjust it, I think, to include this. Something along these lines. So if strategy position size doesn't equal to zero. So instead of looking for longs and shorts. Actually, that's probably a much better way to doing, uh, doing it. Uh, where's our counter? Um... So trade counter is equal to float, blah, 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 blah. Today it buys. So again, we're looking for a crossover, but instead of looking for entry longs or shorts, let's just add this in. That is much better. So if our strategy position side is not equal to zero, so basically we're in a trade, uh, then our trade counter is going to equal to one. So we're not looking for entry longs or shorts, none of that. We're just looking for... If it's not equal to zero, then it's equal to one. Um, resets on the counter, so that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. All the counter will equal to that. I think that works. Should. Yeah, no, that works. So... Let's update that. Hmm. No, it doesn't. I need this condition to be first. So in terms of how the if statement works logically, I need the very first step is if the strategy position size is equal to zero, then the trade counter is going to be equal to one. And then that's going to be an else if. Uh, a little bit techy, unfortunately. Let's see if that works. No, oh, oh, yes, it worked. So I think that is working. 
uh, what we've got here is our, in this example, our counter. Seems to be working fine. We, although we've crossed, the counter has not reset. So that's okay. And we haven't entered into another trade. So that's working. Uh, we can probably go back to our previous example. Which I, to be honest, we got where it was. Here it is, because there was a gap. Oh no. Now we're entering back into here. Uh, you fix one issue and then another one arises, which is not good. So... Oh, wait a minute. No, we haven't. For... Okay. So what's happened here is our counter, because we've already entered a long trade here, so technically it is still working. Uh, we've entered in a long trade here. Our counter hasn't reset back to zero because we're still in a long trade and it won't exit until uh, our exit condition here is met. I don't know what the best approach might be. Well, we can... We can exit the trade based off the exit conditions, to be fair, which we coded up previously. I know it's not against... Sorry, it's not really specified in the code, but I mean... You need to really specify the conditions. So if I updated that to chart. There you go. So we are still exiting when price, in theory, when if price closes below the center line, then we're just going to exit the trade, um, which I mean makes more sense, although it wasn't clarified in that uh, the indicator, uh, the trading labs example, but I think that's fairer. And then we're going to, so it acts as basically a trailing stop loss, um, which is fine. And then we're going to enter back into the trade here. We're going to short exit and our counter doesn't reset until above. So our counter still works. The problem is I reckon if we go back to our, oh no, we've gone back to our previous example. And our previous example still is fine. I thought that might not be fine, but because we're still in the trade. I don't know. We'll, we're in the trade here. Okay, so that's why. So we exited the trade here. I mean, to be fair, we you win some, you lose some. <laughs> and this one, it's based on these conditions. It's a... Fair stop loss, I would assume. So we are stopping out based off the the close here and we don't enter into another long trade until again, we actually do have a reset of our counter. Um, so that doesn't justify a reset. So we're not entering into another trade until our counter is reset, which is here. And then we've entered into another long trade, a short trade. Out of curiosity, Uh, where's our... Strategy tester. Yeah, I'm not doing much. Um, I think this is okay. I think. Uh, the one thing I want to do... Oh, I've just saved that too, haven't I? Is uh, for our plots, I want to plot longs if our plot longs function uh, and I want to turn it off. So our, uh, what we can do here is if our strategy position size is greater than zero, I'm just going to add in a little bit of code. So our long function, so our take profit longs is going to be equal to when our, um, well, our profit longs, what's already coded up, um, value and is that right? I'm just going to test this. No. 
I need to plot this with a condition. Plot, 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 plot shape. Okay. That's how I do it. So this one, question mark, then else NA. That should work. And if that is uh, is greater than zero, that should work. We'll see. Um, is less than zero. Sorry, is greater than zero. Then NA is less than zero. Oops. So basically what I'm doing is putting in conditions of or within the plot function. So then that way it kind of cleans up the plotting. Um, let me explain it. <laughs> Oops. I don't know what happened there. Oh my God. There we go. Uh, Let's see if that fixes anything. Oh, that's so much cleaner. Look at that. <laughs> Brilliant. So we've got here basically the uh, take profit and stop loss levels now are only for the direction of the trade and that we're actually going. So it's not like confusing or anything. Um, so that looks like that's working. Let me save that. So to explain that, as I mentioned, uh, what we had here previously was just plotting the profit uh, level for our longs, the stop level for our longs, and also the profit level for our shorts, the stop level for our shorts. Uh, but what I've done here is put in just some conditions so that we only want to be plotting the profit level for our longs and the profit level for our shorts when our position, our strategy position size is greater than zero. So basically we're in a long trade. Or we are going to... Uh, do the same thing for shorts, but in the opposite direction. So we only want to be plotting our take profit and stop loss level for our shorts when our strategy position size is less than zero. So that's all valid, which is good. So I think we're at a really good point where our Donchin channel is working fine. Our entry conditions is of course working fine as well as adding in our counter. So we're only entering trades when our counter resets as well as our take profit stop loss levels and visually our take profit stop loss lines are working really well. We can simply just add in some more indicators uh, to filter out the conditions. So what we're gonna do is, I think we added in uh, this code. So I have saved that, so that's fine. What we wanna do is the settings are okay. We're going to copy this code. Copy that. Open this. And Donchin Channels Trading Lab Strategy, we are going to find... So under Donchin Channel, we're going to add in a new section. And we're going to copy and paste that code in. Now, one caveat is that, yes, we are using indicators, but we can only use indicators that are, well firstly coded up for us and we can actually access the code. Fortunately enough, in this example, the indicator that is a custom indicator is one that uh, we can put onto the chart, but we can also get the code uh, from. So uh, thank you to the person that did code this up, which is coded by uh, LOX. Thank you. So what we're gonna do, similar to what we did before in the Dungeon channel is clean up the code. Uh, I'm gonna add in just some uh, section break. And I'm going to remove the indicator line. We don't need this indicator. Like the short title and all that, that's all stuff we don't need. I will, however, keep the indicator name, but comment it out. And I'll acknowledge the person that did the code, so that's fine. Uh, color green, color red. Uh, yeah, whatever, we can keep that in there for now. So we're not going to touch any of the code here. 
Uh, this looks like it's all functions that we need, so that's fine. Keep all of that in there. Keep all of that in there. These alerts, we don't need. Plot shapes, we don't need. Go long, we don't need. And then we've got a plot for the middle, um, just to, that's just the, plot, uh, the center line, so that's fine. We don't need that. Uh, we've got the bar color, which is, I guess, equal to well, the colors that were specified previously. We've got the plot out, which is, I'm assuming, uh, this line here. So the trading conditions were, now we're testing me because it's been a while actually. The training condition was uh, we're going long only when the color is green. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, so we'd only be going long here. So that would be, I guess, a valid entry. And I'm assuming going short when the color is red. It looks like that it's just above or below the zero line to be honest. Um, but nonetheless, we can do that. So, uh, Actually, maybe I'll do above and below the zero line. Just so we're not dependent on the colors. Oh no, I'll just do the colors. <laughs> so, um, oh, we'll see. So we've got some conditions here. I'm going to copy those conditions across just to get the consistent variables. Uh, I'm gonna call it indicator two. And we're not using TA crossover. So color out if the, yeah, so if the color is greater than um, the center line, which is 50, I don't know what the plot does, um, then it's green, else it's red. So that's all it is. Um, I'll just do plot out is greater than zero. Oh, oh no, you know what? I'll do if color out, I don't even know if I could do this to be honest, is equal to a color. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just test it. Is that even possible? If color out is equal to red. And then, so I've got our conditions here. I don't know if the conditions work. I've never done a conditions based off a color, but <laughs> what the hell, we'll just do it. Um, once we got our conditions in here, we can go and add in our indicated two long conditions and add in our indicator two short conditions and that's all we need to do there by the looks of it as long as it works what i'm going to do is go into strategy tester and just see um, if it does make any changes we've got 84 trades and we've got 164 net profit we'll see if these conditions actually change anything i just want to make sure that it changes something that's all yeah uh, tear across Okay, this is recommended to extract. Okay, something funny happened there. Maybe it's because of the color. Let's see. No, oh, it's not because of the color. Okay. Um, oh, I reckon, what's going on? This level's working completely fine before. Uh, the function teared across should be called on each calculation for consistency is recommended to extract all the call. Huh. Just work in trading view. No. Oh, we are. I don't even know what that is. Odd. If I remove that, 
I'm just trying to see what has caused the change. Because I don't think that was previously there, was it? Yeah, wow, okay. Now it's deciding to throw. Let me go back to a pre I'll go back to the previous version. Because is it Okay, maybe it was something I missed. Interesting. Okay, compiled and added to chart. Maybe I missed that. And this one will not have that because that's... Now, <laughs> this is... This must be... Uh, it, it, exhilarating for you you lot to watch uh, me trying to figure out what the bloody hell is going on so i don't think it's anything to do with the code that i put together um something's going on here but nonetheless let's see what i can do here so i still i copied over the code previously um that we had there previously and got the long conditions and Sorry, bear with me. Just getting back to where we were before. So we've got our second indicator in and I've added in the long conditions here. I am getting a warning, but let's see if we can get away with that warning just for now. And we still, we got 82 trays, but we've got a hundred and odd. I'm not too sure if anything, maybe something changed. We'll see. I'll try it again. So basically to test if something's working, I'm just commenting out uh, this here. Uh, add the chart. Okay, so we had 84 trades previously and with the new conditions in. We've got 82. Okay, so the conditions are working, which is good. Uh, but they're not really doing much and that is because I have not changed the default values. So the period, which is eight, that was 25 now. And although we're not using the smooth, um, I'll just change that to 20 cause that's what they said. Um, but it's not actually going to do anything. Um, I'll update the chart's default values and this should change it again. I'm assuming because it's a longer period. It's going to reduce the amount of trades that we have. So 82 will likely go down. Did it work? I'm still thinking. Uh, it hasn't done much. 78, but the default parameters for our system seems to be working fine uh what i want to do again is just to make sure oh, all of it looks pretty okay um oh, just to be safe um so we've got here a custom function what i'm going to do is just change the variables of the uh, of the code just so it doesn't conflict with any other variables we might have so per um which is over here, we're going to change to LW, whatever it is, PER. And that's going to be PER, PER, PER. Just want to make sure that nothing that I've missed. That looks good. I don't know what that is. So that's with that, that's fine. Uh, type. So this type is that. And that goes with that. Color bars, show signals, that's fine. MA definitely needs to change. ATR definitely needs to change. Out definitely needs to change. That's out, that's out. And color out 
Yeah, what the hell, why not? Uh, color bar is, ah, oh, just do the whole lot. Show signals. All right, let's hope I didn't break anything. <laughs> I hope. Um, oh, and that's out there. And that's just giving me the warning there. So, yeah, looks like everything still works. Um, sorry. So again, the reason for that is I just need to make sure that all the variables for this indicator don't conflict with any other variables that we might have within the code. So uh, that's why you need to make these unique. And I've just added in the LWTI reference to each one of those variables there. So that's just the process that we need to do. Um, so that's completely fine. Um, I still don't know what this warning is. Uh, oh, let's just do a quick Google search. Um, if your code is like this, then you're likely getting an error. Try this. Uh -huh. Yeah, crossover should be called. Okay, that's not my issue. Contrain basis. Because of that. <laughs> I'm just trying rubbish to be honest. Oh, I mean that would make more sense actually to be honest. Just regardless. The dungeon channel of the previous close and the current close. I think, well, if I'm reading it right, um, let's say um, I need to create a new variable called um, Don basis cross is equal to, I think that's what they're saying. And then that is equal to that. Okay, that's fixed the issue. So basically what, whoa, <laughs> took me a while. Uh, what this is saying is that when there is a, um, there's an error or a warning that basically what, um, what it's saying is we should be calculating the TA crossover every time the function runs. So every time there's a new bar, we calculate the crossover um, or whether there is a cross. What was happening is that um, in the if statement, we were only calculating the TA cross if this condition, this first condition wasn't true, um, which in some instances um, it would be true. So this TA cross would never actually be calculated, which is what the warning was suggesting. Um, I don't think it really is a big issue, but because of my OCD, um, don't really have it, but uh, because I would personally want to fix any warnings that we have. Uh, I've created a new variable called, um, if there is a, well, um, a TA a dungeon basis cross uh, is equal to the TA cross condition that we did have before. And if there is a cross, then um, we refer to the variable here. So we calculate this TA cross every time and we just refer to the variable as equal to true. Um, uh, when we need to. So this should hopefully still keep our conditions all the same, which it does. And I just want to make sure um, it's not a good example. Because I've added in 
the code. Uh, we still exited. I think technically that's still correct. We exited when there was a cross here and then the counter did reset. So I know we've gone back to this example a couple of times, but technically it is accurate. Uh, I'll keep it. I'll keep it how it is. Because we exited the training strategy on the cross of this. And because we've exited, then the cross uh, technically has reset and we've entered the trade. So theoretically, this is more accurate. It doesn't help us in that particular example, but it is, well, more accurate. So I think our trading strategy is working. Um, just to go back to the trading rules, um, in this example, we are going long based off the conditions here. And we're going long uh, when the color is green, which it is. So that's good. And we are going short. In this example, we're going short when the color is red which is fine <laughs> the problem is is that well it doesn't really do a whole lot it gets rid of eight trades or something like that ten trades um so it doesn't really do much but hey nonetheless that's what it does the very last thing we need to do why is volume there very last thing we need to do is add in i can remove that a volume indicator And it's 30 again, and we're visualizing that. Cool. So we're only going to be adding, oh sorry, entering a trade when there is a enough volume. So volumes higher than uh, the moving average line. So again, same thing. I've saved this. What I'm going to do is go into the volume code. Uh, can I get it? I can't get it. Hello? <laughs> uh, so the option to get the source code isn't available there, but let's see if I can go built-in scripts volume. Can I not get the volume indicator? Get volume? No, don't tell me. Uh, volume indicated volume dungeon. Hmm. Now this is fun. Oh goodness. So open. Twenty four hour volume. Net volume on balance volume. Price volume. I don't think you can get the source code for the volume indicator. Ain't no way. If I go a new indicator, plot volume. What does this do? Well, that's our volume indicator, which is super annoying. <laughs> well, that wasn't planned. As you can tell, this is not scripted. So, well, I personally never use the volume indicator and I would assume because this is something that's by uh, default uh, comes out by um, training you that you could actually get the source code for the volume indicator, but it looks like you can't. However, saying that you can literally just get the volume value from... Uh, 
from typing in volume and that's the indicator there. Uh, now we just need a moving average. And so we can also, um, I guess, get moving average. Um, MA, sorry. Um, volume underscore MA is equal to uh, TA dot SMA. And we can get the moving, the simple moving average of the volume. And that's to a length of 30, I believe it was. And then we can plot this as well. Plot volume MA and uh, color is equal to color dot white. I believe that's how we do it. And let's update this. Now I want to see that the value is equal the same, which it looks like it does. 18.694, we got 70. Well, there we go. <laughs> a little bit of a bonus. We've just created the volume indicator. So I'm assuming that's going to be enough. Well, I mean, it is. Um, we've got that. Open up. Go to our dungeon channel. And we're going to be adding in our final indicator. Uh, volume. Uh, we're going to copy and copy the conditions again. We are going to uh, long short uh, for both indicator three. So we're changing that. Now we don't need the plot functions. I'll keep them there just for a second. Uh, basically our indicator conditions for the volume is volume needs to be um, a volume needs to be greater than our volume moving average, which is that value. Um, and that's whether it's long and short as well. Now I know they mentioned that you have to look at the color of the volume, but uh, well, the, all the color of the volume is doing is looking at the, the, the color of the candle close. So whether the candle close is higher than um, well, in this case for shorts, if the candle is a um, red candle, then that just plots red in the volume. And if it's a green candle, then it plots green. And that's all it does. It doesn't look at anything else. So whether it's red or not, doesn't really matter. To be honest, we would only be entering trades anyway uh, if the candle was red in this example, because we need the candle to be red for us to enter the trade regardless, because that is our condition is to go short. We need... Uh, price to open and then close lower than the previous dungeon channel. So it is always going to be red. So I'm not really worried about the colors. It's just well, rubbish, to be honest. Um, all we need to do is worry about whether the volume is greater than the moving average, which is this condition here. That's all it is. I remove the plot functions. I have a calculation for the, um, the moving average. The volume's there. Um, by default and we'll just keep it hard coded in there that we're looking at a moving average of 30. That's fine. Um, and that. And that. We can see if this works. So if I go back to our strategy tester, we've got here 74 trades. Again, this is a filter, so we, we should be getting less trades. So... Uh, update on chart. Okay, we actually did a fairly decent uh, change there. Cool. So that is our training strategy done. What I might do is actually add in um, a variable called volume MA period is equal to 30. And then uh, um, how do I do an input again? Should be just input. Uh, yeah, input.int. That's right. Input.int, default value of that. Uh, title is um, 
volume MA period. There we go. So then we can change that if we want. And that's the conditions of our train strategy. Um, what am I doing? Update that. And that looks like it's working. So uh, we've got a little bit going on here. So I'll just make that short. I'll keep this one in there just to make sure that it's all the same. But we can test out our uh, training strategy here. So we've entered a short trade here. Um, and that's our profit, uh, profit and stop loss level. But we did exit it fairly prematurely because our um, price just went straight back up. So this was a losing trade, which is fine and happens. We've got here a long entry, so a long trade, and we have entered long and we've exited uh, again based off a close or a cross back up below the dungeon sensor. So then that's just an exit, so that's fine. Um, we haven't entered short. There was a previous short example here, but we haven't entered it. I'm assuming because there was no volume. There we go, so our volume indicator is working. So that's fine, even though this was a winning trade, but it doesn't happen often where there's, I mean, it does, but uh, there's, I guess, really nothing happening and then there's a massive gap. So yeah, something happened. Um, it's probably the daily close and then open. Is it? Yeah, it was. Just gapped. So that's fine. Uh, we had previous trades here, but we don't have any more because there's no volumes. Fair enough. Um, and I guess, to be fair, it did uh, remove some of those poorly performing trades. So that's fine. So remove those. And now we're entered into a short trade, which we don't know this is current. Uh, short trade. We've entered short here. That's our take profit. Our stop loss level is and our previous dungeon channel. And again, this is now acting as a more or less a trailing stop loss. I mean, the dungeon channel can move back up, but we'll likely get stopped out before it happens then. It's not like a true trailing stop loss. Uh, but it looks like it's working and that did enter the trade when there was just enough volume there. Um, we can see it a little bit better um, down below here in our new custom indicator that we had to create. Random, but whatever. Um, but it looks like everything is working. So I'm just gonna go back into the code, clean a few things up because I've done a pretty hodgepodge job on um, the structure of my code. So I'll keep this structure here. So Donchin channel. Uh, that's fine. And we've got here. This is now that one there. That's okay. Can probably remove that. <laughs> I can't believe that color red actually worked. That's hilarious. Got the volume indicator. It's fine. And then we've got now our entry conditions. It's okay. Um, can remove that. So take profit and stop loss levels. And we've got our conditions here. Maybe what I'll do just to make it a little bit better is I will put in Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Um, 
risk reward. Underscore R is equal to um, int dot. Is it float dot? Um, oh no, input dot float is equal to two point zero. Oops. Default value and title is going to be um, risk reward. Uh, cool. So then now the user will be able to specify what risk reward they want to target. So that should work. Double check that. Oh, I keep doing that. I keep forgetting the training view. You can just update the chart and it just works. I should still be 300. That's fine. And if I change my risk to reward to, I can do 1.5. Here we go. So that changes it. And now if I go into the, there we go. In this example here, I'm now targeting a 1.5 1, 1 risk to reward, which we can see here, risk to reward ratio is 1.5. So that's a, another addition that the user can specify. Uh, exit orders, that's fine. And again, um, so exit orders. And then these are actually um, close orders. There we go. I think that cleans it up a little bit. I've put caps. Uh, volume indicator. LWTI, and this is by Lorx. Thank you again for giving us your code. And Don Chien channel. Cool. So I think this completes our code. <laughs> That's a long body video, but whatever. Um, for those that want to watch it, it's there. Uh, so we've got here, just to recap. Go away. Uh, just to recap, we've got here our code. So this is the Donchin channel strategy. Let's go on. Strategy, which is by Trading Labs. And we can see here, we've got our code for the Donchin channel and we've got our conditions for the Donchin channel. We've got here our Larry Williams large trade index code and conditions. And we are taking the conditions based off the color of the indicator, which is a first for me, but look, it works. Uh, we've got here our volume indicator and that volume indicator is based off uh, our indicator that we had to code up because we couldn't actually get the code, but fortunately enough, it was actually relatively easy. Literally not planned. So um, I'm glad that actually worked. I was starting to think that we got an hour or so into the video, probably longer and I uh, couldn't actually do it because we couldn't get the volume indicator, but fortunately enough, we were able to do something there. So then once we have all of those conditions, we then put all those conditions together to get a entry long condition and entry short condition. And then from there, what we needed to do is actually put in a trade counter. So we've got here a trade counter and what I might do is actually um, uh, plots uh, underscore trade underscore counter is equal to input dot boolean um, default value false um, so I'm gonna add in a um, a plot trade an input to, so that the user can actually specify whether they want to see the trade counter or not. And I can just put in that condition 
at the start of our plot characters value. So if I add this to chart and default value is actually equal to zero. So if I update the chart, this should actually get rid of our, there we go, ones and zeros. But if I go into just for testing purposes, I wanted to plot the counter and I can plot it there. That's fine, so that works. Um, UI options, sorry, and I'm just seeing this UI options color bar and show signals. We do not need that. And that is from our, uh, Williams input full smooth. That's fine. There's some input color bar. These ones here. So we don't need this. That's UI options and show signals because we removed the signals. That's why that was still there. So that is fine. If I add that back. Sorry, I'm deviating. Okay, so that works, that's fine. Basic settings. <laughs> uh, smoothing type. That's all the, okay. And volume, cool. Basic settings, that's an error. I'll clean that up in just a minute. I'll come back to that. Sorry. Um, so we've got here the volume moving average. So that's fine. We've done that. We've specified whether we want to plot the counter. That's fine. So with all of that, we now have the actual conditions. Um, also, sorry, we're plotting the shape. So we're plotting the shape when there is a entry long. So the user can see that there is a long entry, but only when the trade counter is equal to zero. Same thing for shorts. And then uh, what we do here is we then enter long only when the trade counter for the previous candle is equal to zero. And so if it's not equal to zero, that means we've already entered a trade. So we're waiting for a crossover to occur. So we don't have to worry about that. So we close that. Oh, sorry, so then um, we've added in that and that's our entry signal for our long entry and short entry. And then from there, we've coded up our take profits uh, and stop loss levels. We've got here a input now for our profit level. Um, or our target profit level, which is based off uh, our stop loss level times a risk reward amount. Um, default value is two, but the user can now select whatever profit level they want. We are storing the entry price, so that's fine. And we are getting the entry price from the Donchin channel uh, center line or the basis line, so that, that way we can get our entry price um, minus the stop. Um, we can get our stop loss level, which is basically the distance from our entry price in the Donchin center line. Um, then we do all the appropriate calculations, which is all here. And then we plot the take profit stop loss levels just visually so the user can see that. And then we exit the orders based off the appropriate conditions for our um, stop and our take profit or our limit for both our longs and our shorts. And also we've added in here our close orders, which is basically when uh, the uh, price closes below the Donjon Channel center line, then we're gonna be closing the trade as well. So that's just another condition that we've added in. I just wanna clean up the... Uh, the grouping, I don't want any grouping, just keep it simple. Actually, no, I'll keep it as group. What I'll do is um, LWTI, LWTI settings. That's basic settings. I'll add some groupings for the other ones. Uh, input. Donchian settings. Um, uh, 
volume settings, that's fine. Uh, pot settings. This one can be pot settings. So we've got plot settings here and our final input. Let's call this risk settings. Uh, let's see if that cleans up the code. Update. So I've got here Dungeon Channel settings, it's 96, LWTI settings. So we've got the period, the smooth, smoothing type, volume settings, that's fine. Plot settings. So that's cool. So that plots that. And then we've got risk settings, risk to reward target, um, which is two, um, and that can be changed. Cool. Um, so I think that probably wraps up this code. I'm not going to go into money management and risk management, to be honest, just noting the time of this video, but I mean, I can leave that up to you. What I'm going to do, of course, I'm going to copy all of this code. I am going to go onto Visual Studio and what I'm going to do is File new, new text file. Uh, pine. I'm going to paste this into VS and I'm going to go file, save as. Uh, what am I going to do? GitHub training view strategies. I'm going to save this into my git. Basic strategies. Uh, let's add a new file. Um, what are we going to call this? Uh, new series. Um, I don't know. Um, Detailed strategies. <laughs> um, we can go advanced. Advanced strategies. And let's call this Donshin Channel. Donshin Channel LWTI Volume. Yeah, we'll remove trading labs. <laughs> cool, so that's saved. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to upload this into my GitHub. Uh, this is my GitHub repository. Commit to main. I'm going to push. Uh, that's that. I can go to GitHub. And if I go to MetaTrader, uh, wrong one, training view. Jeez, I hope I put that in the right one. Um, advanced strategies, here we go. Um, dungeon channel LWTI volume. That is available on my GitHub. So if you are following along and you want to double check your code, you can of course come in here and then do that. I might just add some commentary up the top here, but I won't bore you down in terms of well, me putting that in. I'll also go in here and validate everything and maybe make some updates if I need to, but I think everything is working as expected. So, this is a very long video, unfortunately. Um, I'm just looking at the time and it is quite a long time, probably my longest video, but I did want to keep it raw and in one, well, one video to really show you exactly how developing a training strategy actually looks like unedited completely raw from start to finish developing a training strategy that i actually have not developed in the past and now admittedly yes i have done some dungeon channel and i've done dungeon channel work in the um in the channel <laughs> and i'm tired uh, but saying that um 
using other indicators and some of the issues that we actually did come across. To be honest, that was actually a bit more challenging than I actually originally anticipated, but with a little bit of persistence and a little bit of um, knowledge, I suppose, in terms of how to navigate and problem solve, which no doubt there was a lot of problems in this tutorial, well, not problems, but challenges, um, we were able to navigate it and I think put together a training strategy that does resemble more or less what the um, intent was from Trading Labs uh, Dungeon Channel LWTI volume indicator um, or strategy. Um, so saying that, hopefully that gives you a bit of insight in terms of how I personally develop codes, how I go about adding in indicators and problem solving and finding a solution in a very, 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 very long video. Um, but saying that for those that did stick around uh, for the whole video and st stuck around to the end, um, well, power to you. It's been a pleasure, I guess, coding this video, coding this strategy and giving you this video and giving you the code on my GitHub. Um, so saying that, hopefully it was worthwhile. Hopefully it gave you some insight in terms of how to code a training strategy um, and really give you the process in terms of coding any other training strategy um, that you might come across, you know, on the interwebs or whatever the case is. So saying that, if you did like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Um, and I also have started a YouTube membership. I don't expect anything from that. Um, but for those that do want to support the channel, then that does help out a hell of a lot because it helps me stay motivated uh, to make sure that I still deliver on these videos and you do get a bit of bonuses, I suppose, in terms of uh, what is available on the membership too. So saying that, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, you haven't fallen asleep <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one.